Oh, hello there. I was wondering if you would come and see me. I noticed you over there staring at me for quite some time this evening. I'm glad you finally got up the courage to come over and speak to the strange person sitting in the shadows in the back. Oh, that is not good, is it? Will you like this? Oh, it, um... In my country, drinks are a bit more filled with fire, I suppose. This sort of tastes like I'm drinking. Never mind, never mind. Um, hello there. I... To be honest, I was not expecting to see any other non-dwarf in this leg of my journey. It's interesting seeing a human. That is what, what species you are, correct? Okay, good. <laughs> I mean, we, we have humans in my country, but uh, perhaps you look similar, but are actually something else. I just wouldn't want to assume. Okay, good. My country? Yes, I come from the Empire of Kanjagar. To the west of here. You've heard of it, yes? Good. Good. It does get a bit better after you've drank a few, a few sips, doesn't it? Well, a bit anyway. <laughs> what am I doing here? I suppose I could ask you the same question. Not every day that outsiders come to this city of Napwin, I would assume. I am here on a... How do you say? A, a diplomatic mission. That is right. I am an ambassador for the Empress herself of Kantagar. That's right. You see, the relations between this kingdom, the kingdom of Meladia, and the Empire of Kantagar have been quite tense for quite some time. But recently, a new Empress has taken the throne of Kantagar. And she wants to repair some of the relations with other kingdoms and countries and peoples nearby. She wants to turn Kandagar into a more welcoming place. A place with a better reputation, I suppose. <laughs> so, she has sent some ambassadors into the world to see what others might think of the people of Kanjagar, as well as perhaps hopefully open up some new channels of trade and the like. Now, unfortunately, the king of Malatia here, he is none too welcoming when it comes to people of Kantagar, especially people that look like me. But perhaps someday he will change his mind. Luckily though, the dwarves who live in this kingdom, while they are still technically under the king's rule, they have a bit more freedom to do what they wish. So, I was sent here to uh, speak with some of the Dwarven chieftains, get to know the, the culture here, the climate of the, the, the politics, things like that. A, a, a bit boring, I suppose, for, for an outsider, but crucial to understand how our people are seen by you. 
Anyway, so I have been sent here with a gift. You know, I think if I had not had that gift, even a scroll signed by the Empress herself would not have been, have been enough to get me in. It's quite the process getting into Napwin if you are not a dwarf. I'm sure you know, I'm sure you do not have to be told. Guess they said this would be years for someone who did not have a, an official ambassador title. Yes. Goodness. I mean, my people, we have quite a long lifespan, so I suppose I could have waited, but much nicer to not have to. Even with a long lifespan, my people are, well, we're not known for our patience. Still not good, but better, perhaps. <laughs> My people... Oh, yes, I am... Well, the name of my people, it, it does not translate very well. So, most people refer to us as Dragonians. Yes, it's, it's a loose translation, to be sure, but... It's, it will suffice, I suppose. Yes. There are, even in Kanjakar, it is our homeland, but there are not too many of us left. Unfortunately, in the last few centuries, Kanjakar has been plagued with civil war and unrest. And also quite a bit of natural things going wrong, famine, things like that. And unfortunately, when people face hardships, sometimes they look for someone to blame, even if there really is no one to blame. Unfortunately, my people got the majority of the wrath. But there, there, there are still some of us there. We just keep our heads down a bit more now. But we're still there. Yes. I'm, uh, I'm used to the staring at this point. The staring and the pointing and the whispers and the suspicion. It is unfortunate that when people see someone different, they usually meet that with fear or heat instead of with a, a, a willingness to get to know them. It is unfair, but it is the way of things in many places, not just this kingdom. Most likely not just Kanchakar either, but it is what it is. At least being in a city full of dwarves. Dwarves seem to be a very honorable people. And so most of them do honor the ambassador's agreement. Where I can come and collect data. And even ask some questions. And most people have been at least somewhat receptive. Which has been good. Yes. Oh, the questions? Yes. Um, mostly just, you know, trying to understand a bit more about the culture here and also what people might think of people of Kanjagar. Yes. You know, I, I was sent here to collect information about dwarves, but seeing as the king of Maladia has made it difficult to speak with humans. Perhaps this would be a good time to ask you some questions, if you would be willing to answer in the name of community, in the name of unity on this, on this continent and repairing the relationships of the past.
excellent thank you you know that sip wasn't so bad i think i still don't think it's good but it's it's growing on me a bit i suppose all right <laughs> here let me get my my notes here there we are it is quite an extensive list of questions there may be some that you don't have an exact answer for and that's all right just give me your best bet all right and i know that i am an outsider of this place but these questions they are they're for posterity so please be as honest as you can all right I promise I will not, I will not think any less of you or any different of the answers that you give. I am simply here to collect the data. Yes? All right, good. The first few are very easy, don't worry. All right, what is your name? All right. Just the first name is fine, yeah. Were you named after anyone? Or does your name mean something to your people? Hmm. Fascinating. All right, and I am assuming that Napwin is not your city of origin. Where are you from? Whisperwind. Never met anyone from there before. Where is that exactly from here? North and east of here, okay. What else is up in that in that sort of area? Oh, alright. Okay, good, good. Just trying to orient myself a bit better of the geography of this this kingdom. How long have you lived in this whisper wind? Okay. Where did you live before there? Far away, really. Is that outside of the kingdom of Maladia or or still inside the kingdom, but far away from Whisper? It's a bit ambiguous, but I suppose it will do. All right, moving on from that for now. What is your profession? Oh. Another somewhat ambiguous answer. Is that a common profession where you are from? Not exactly. Mm. Interesting. I suppose in a way I am also a traveler. So I'm sure that you have a purpose in your travels as well. Right. Now this next question is about the the beliefs of this kingdom or, or of you specifically as a member of this kingdom what gods or goddesses or other beings do you believe in if any okay i have heard of this Lady Fate before. Yes. I believe it is actually similar to a deity that we have in Ganjagar. Though the dwarves have their own gods and goddesses that they worship underneath the Lady Fate. Interesting. Hmm. How much impact would you say that 
the gods or these divine beings have on your daily life. Okay? No, there are no wrong answers. You just, whatever it is that you believe. Okay. In Kanjagar, the gods play a part in everything. Every part of life is permeated by our spiritual beliefs. But not every place is like that. And that is not necessarily a bad thing. It is just a different way of, of looking at the world, I suppose. That's why I'm asking these questions, to learn. Right. Now, in your opinion, what are the key elements to what you may consider a good life? What does someone need to have a good life? Hmm. That's a good answer. Do you have a good life? That's fair. Okay. How would you define success? Hmm. Okay. Your questions like that, it, um, it is very telling of what is important to a person, you know? Alright. Have you ever left the kingdom of Malaysia before? Mm. Okay. Don't know. Alright, now what is your opinion of the current political climate of this kingdom? Is that too broad a question? That is fair, that is fair. How about, um, what do you think of the current king, the royal house, the way that things are run? Would you say that it is done well or not? It is all right to be honest. These Answers are never going to be seen by anyone other than myself and other members of ambassadors and people like that from Kanjakar, but no one from your country. Oh, everything's wonderful, yes? I'm sure. That seems to be the answer that everyone gives to that question very quickly, too. All right. Anything else you would like to add about that sort of thing? The, the political climate, the way that things are. Okay. All right. Now, there are three different races of people that live in the kingdom of Malaysia right now, according to our knowledge. There are humans, obviously. There are gnomes and there are dwarves. Now, how would you describe each? Could you give me just a few words off the top of your head to describe humans? seems fair. All right, now how about a few words to describe dwarves? Guess hmm. I, I believe that is that it's a good one from what I have observed at least. Okay, 
And then lastly, gnomes. Have you, have you met any gnomes before? Oh, a few of them, good, good. All right, what, what would be a few words you would use to describe gnomes? Interesting. All right. Now, how would you describe the relationship between the different races within the kingdom? Okay. What, in, in your opinion, is the biggest problem facing the people of Malaysia today? What would you say? Hmm. That's a good one. No one has said that yet. Alright, now, I understand that magic in this kingdom is a bit of a touchy subject these days for the last 150 years or so after the the, the civil war and and things like that yes I, I probably don't have the entire story but i know at least a bit what has been your experience with magic have, have you still been have you still seen people doing magic Okay, in, in what sort of capacity? Hmm. Okay, yes, I understand that magic is not necessarily forbidden. It just, most people don't know enough to actually practice. But you seem to have come across a few who are, hmm? <laughs> hmm. Interesting. That is good to know that magic is not completely foreign to this kingdom. I was under the impression that it was much more rare than that, so that is that is good to hear. Every land has its own sort of innate magic. It's good to see that a, a, a people have, you know, tapped into that primal source. Okanjagar, yes, oh yes. Many, many people practice magic. Yes, in many different capacities. In uh, healing magic, in divination. We have quite a few mystics, especially those that work for the Empress. We have, uh, you know, combatants. We have all sorts of magic, yes. It is different. It, it works differently than the magic of this land, from, from my understanding. But, yes, magic is very much a part of daily life in the kingdom of Ganjaka. Right, now what is the best part of living in Malaysia? What would you say? Hmm. Right. That's lovely. Right, now these next few questions are, um, these, these are the ones about Kanjakar, and I want you to answer please as honestly as you can. I know that as a member of Kanjakar it, it may seem a bit strange, but I, I want you to just tell me exactly what comes to your mind, alright? Okay, well first off, how much would you say that you know of 
the kingdom, the, the empire of Kanchakar. Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Like I said, relations between Malaysia and Kanjagar have not been very good for a very long time, so it is understandable that there is not much known. Have you ever met a person from Kanjagar before me? Oh, you have? Oh, who? A fortune teller. Oh, most likely it was a mystic. Every once in a while, the mystics of Kanjagar, they, they go off on a pilgrimage, following the, the call of the spirits. Interesting. Mystic. Interesting. And what was your opinion of that person? I am glad that you gleaned something from your encounter with her. That would make her very pleased indeed. Mystics are interesting people, but they love to be able to pass on insight from the spirits to those willing to listen. All right, well, that's all the questions that I have for now anyway. I suppose if I am sent back to this kingdom in another time, I may have more specific questions about different things. But for now, like I said, this is more just an information gathering, gathering mission to test the waters per se. Well, thank you. I am. Um, it was nice to be able to speak with someone. <laughs> yes, the, the dwarves here have mostly been amiable, but not necessarily what I would consider open with their questions and, and answers. <laughs> but that is to be expected. Apparently, the dwarves here are. Um, even a bit suspicious of the other races that live in this kingdom. <laughs> so seeing someone completely different would be quite the shock. Well, at least I have my, my scroll with the blessing of an empress on it. It means quite a lot. And of course my, my gift to the dwarves. <laughs> This is something that um, I believe the dwarves, well, all people in this kingdom, but especially dwarves, hold very dearly. You see, Kanjagar is, it's, it's a rather hostile land. It's, it is not good for things like uh, farming, you know, good land like that. But it is full of riches in other ways. This is just a small token of the Empress's gratitude in allowing me to come and speak with the chieftains of Napuin. Yes. Beautiful gemstones taken right from the mines of Kanjagar. Something no uh, dwarves could done. Um, very much appreciate, I think. Do you think the Dwarven Chieftains will like my gift? Good. That is good to hear. They are quite lovely stones, are they not? 
you know it's interesting gemstones and other things that are considered quite valuable in this kingdom they are abundant in the empire of Kanjagar and yet there are some things that are necessities to life that we do not have much access to and all the riches in the world are not worth anything if you do not have the basic needs to survive hopefully someday there will be good trade between Kanjagar and the greater kingdom of Maladia once more. It would be quite beneficial for my people to be able to trade easier. Yes. But we make do. We always do. Anyway, I uh, suppose I should not take up any more of your time. Thank you again for answering my questions. I appreciate it. As will the, the Empress of Kanjagar. You know, you never said what you were doing in the city of Napoli. You're not going to tell me, are you? Yeah, that is all right. Your business is your business. My business, I suppose, is technically your business too. <laughs> because of the nature of my business. But I have learned not to pry. <laughs> well, whatever it is that brings you to this very fascinating city. I hope that it, uh, that it goes well for you. Yes. Perhaps we will speak again before either of us leave the city. But if not, I hope that your time is fruitful and enjoyable. Well, it was a pleasure to meet you, human. Bye for now. <laughs>